Hi everybody, it's Chrissy here. I want to do a worship life moment and I know it's been a long, long time since I've done a video and uh, I just wanted to take the opportunity because I was inspired yesterday to um, really share some tips with you uh, regarding navigating life with your children at home right now during quarantine and just the families in close proximity. Now, number one, a disclaimer, I am not an expert. <laughs> Trust me. I've raised some kids and everything that I've learned that I'm going to share with you today is part of looking behind me and really looking in hindsight. You know, as a parent, one of the best things I ever learned was you can't know what you don't know. And so a lot of these things that I'm going to share with you, they're things that I learned in hindsight that at the time I didn't know at the time. So cut yourself some slack, give yourself some grace. But, um, you know, I want to acknowledge that right now is a really tough time. And what inspired me to do this was I started to think about what life would look like right now if I was raising my kids right now in this season uh, that our whole world is walking through right now. And boy, I tell you what, I breathed a sigh of relief that I wasn't in that zone because, man, I was such a perfectionist growing up, uh, my kids, and just I was so hard on myself as a parent. And what I learned by looking back was, man, I made some I made their lives miserable sometimes <laughs> because of me having to have everything perfect. Perfect. So from that, I've learned some things and I want to share them with you. And I'm just going to share my heart with you because that's kind of how I flow best. But <clears throat> the first tip I want to give you is to relax. Um, you don't have to have everything right during this time. There's so much social media out there. I don't think I've seen as many videos in the last years I've seen in the last week. People going online, doing live this, doing that, me doing a video here. And there's so much um, suggestions for activities for your kids. And I can't imagine the barrage of things that's hitting you as parents uh, right now. I raised three kids, twin boys and a daughter. And my boys were all boys and my daughter was all girl. And uh, they still are. And so it was tough navigating some of those things. And, you know, kids, like you said before, kids don't come with an instruction manual. You're writing it as they're growing up. <laughs> I probably could write an instruction manual in hindsight, but hey, every kid's different. Every family's different. But I want to encourage you to relax. I want to encourage you that you don't have to have everything right right now. Your kids are home, they're probably doing school online, so you might be feeling some pressure to help them with that, and maybe you don't know what's going on, maybe they know more about it than what you do, and chances are that's probably true. Relax. If you need to take a break, mom, dad, if your kids need to take a break, go take a rest, go outside, shoot some hoops, go walk around the block as a family, uh, send your teenager out to walk the dog, you know, or whatever, play. Grab some board games, pull them out and play. You have to learn how to relax. You don't have to have everything right right now. The other, the next tip is notice. I want you to be an, observe, an observer of your children's life right now. Just kind of sit back and watch. What are the really positive things that you're seeing about them right now? What are some of their weaknesses that are starting to show? What are some of the ways they interact with each other? Um, that you could probably just by observing fix, you know, you could uh, resolve those things. So be a noticer. Notice your kids. Pat them on the back when they do something really great. Our lives move so fast otherwise that most of the time as parents were barking out orders, get your lunchbox, don't forget your backpack. Are you, did you wear the right socks today, you know, um, walk, brush your teeth, you know, uh, get in the shower. We're constantly barking orders to our kids. And I want you to put yourself in their place and feel how it feels to hear that all the time. So what I want to encourage you to do is notice, observe, and then pat them on the back. If they need a little help with some of their weaknesses, sit down and really encourage them instead of making it so dogmatic. Because I'm going to tell you one reason why parents are so dogmatic with their kids is because they fear the judgment of other parents. Look, I know that's a big statement, but when I was raising my kids, um, I learned that, that 
I didn't care. Uh, let me tell you the story really quick. Growing up in the church, you know, you learn to understand what people judge and what they don't judge. And back in the day when Bart Simpson was really, really um, popular, somebody gave our kids some hand-me-down clothes. And in those clothes was a Bart Simpson t-shirt. So I didn't have nothing against Bart Simpson. We didn't watch it in our house because I didn't think he was a very good role model. But my kid could wear a shirt. I don't care. So one Wednesday, Wednesday night, we go to church. So one Wednesday, my kid's wearing a Bart Simpson shirt the whole day. And then that night, I told him to take it off. He wasn't wearing it to church. And right away, the Lord convicted me. I mean, I was getting into a fight with this kid about, you are not wearing that shirt and you're not going to church in that shirt. Da, 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 da. And the Lord really showed me my hypocrisy. <laughs> That, why do you care if he wears this shirt to church? Well, because I don't want somebody to judge me as a bad parent because they're going to think that my kid watches Bart Simpson and he really doesn't. You know, it was a humongous learning curve for me. And I would bet right now you're dealing with some of those things. Look, uh, a destruction of a relationship is not worth a shirt about Bart Simpson. You better let go of that hypocrisy. And look, I'm preaching to myself because I really learned a huge lesson back then. But what I'm saying is um, we have to not be so dogmatic about things and learn to see ourselves. Hey, look, you need to notice yourself too. The other thing, the other tip I want to give you is as you're navigating this time now that your kids are at home, you're probably wanting to create a lot of structure so that they stay they can stay focused and do their schoolwork and all that kind of stuff. And what I want you to do is take it slow. Your all of our lives have changed right now, including our children. They're stressed too with different things. You know, think about your teenager. They're not able to go out and hang out with their friends right now. So they're stressed too in a way. And we have to remember that our kids have emotions too. So we want to take it slow when we're when we're introducing things maybe today needs to be super structured but maybe tomorrow needs to be a little more spontaneous and a little more loose okay the world is not going to come to an end if you don't have a lot of structure now my personality right now is kind of more spontaneous when i was raising my kids it was rah 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 you got to have things in order and you got to do it right part of that was because i feared the judgment of other people and part of that was I learned growing up to be dress right dress. I, I was in a military family. We were uh, career military. And so there were a lot of things that had to be just so. And I turned into this humongous perfectionist, which, um, oh boy, my poor kids. I, when I look back, I think, oh, you poor family. <laughs> You know, but I did the best I could. And of course, you know, I've let those things go. I forgive myself. But all I'm saying is I can take from those experiences and help you. And the last tip that I have for you is to make sure that I'm going to call this your stop, drop and pray. You know, the fire thing where you have to go stop, drop and roll. Well, I'm telling you, stop what you're doing, drop on your knees and pray. And what does that mean? That means if you get in a scuffle with your kids or your spouse and emotions are starting to go up here and man, you're starting to scream like a banshee and your voice, the level, the, o the octave of your voice is going up uh, a whole two levels. It's time to pull yourself back and pull out of that. Because why? Because we do and we say things when our emotions are way up here that we would never do otherwise. And look, if you are feeling your adrenaline go up, you're getting so angry or frustrated that you want to punch a hole in the wall, you better back up before you punch something else. And I'm just telling it like it is. We are human beings. We have emotions. There's so much stress right now with, especially if you've lost a job, if you've lost a loved one due to this virus, or even if you've lost a loved one, period. There is so much stress right now. We have to acknowledge that we are human beings and that what these th these stressors can impact us. So what we have to do is we have to pull ourselves back. And these are just practical tips. These are so practical. Pull ourselves back out of the situation and our kids too, because the kids can get crazy too. And they can be yelling and everybody can be yelling and then it, it just turns into a, a total fiasco. So you want to stop, 
pull back, go to another room, go outside, have your kid go out, out to the backyard. If you are a spouse and your spouse is getting way up here and it's going crazy, if they don't remove themselves from the room, you remove yourself from the room. And look, I, I'm going to insert this in here right now because you might be out there and say, man, it's really bad in my house. You know, there, things have come to blows in my house. Maybe you're dealing with a domestic violence situation. Maybe you are dealing with some of that right now. The first thing I would tell you to do is just pray, pray, pray for wisdom. Because you've got to have wisdom to navigate those times. And if you see that things are so escalated, get to a safe place. And I know sometimes leaving a situation like that is when it's most volatile you do what your intuition is telling you to do about how safe you are. You can trust that. You're the one that's navigating that. But when emotions are that high, pull yourself away. Go into another room. Forgive yourself is a huge one. But now I'm, I'm kind of going into a really deep place that's probably best um, suited for another video. But... I want to let you know, even people that are not involved in domestic violence situations, your emotions can get so high sometime that you do want to um, hurt somebody. Yeah, that's true that those things happen. So I'm telling you, pull yourself back, stop, drop to your knees. Best thing you can do is drop to your knees and pray yourself through that thing. And then... When all the emotions have calmed down, come back together and discuss the situation rationally. You have no rational thinking when your emotions are way up here. Neither do your kids. And, and your kids especially because they're young. They're not mature like you are and, and don't know how to navigate those emotions. So you have to be the adult and you have to stop the situation and not let it go anywhere. I went kind of long on that one, but I just really wanted to reiterate that. So those are the tips I have for you today. Um, I hope and pray that you are navigating this time with a lot of fun. Have fun. Play. Play as parents. Play together. Play with your family. Go outside and shoot some hoops. Go for a walk. Go for a hike. Break out the board games. And um, sit down with your kid who's loving this video game that he's playing on his phone and play the video game with him. There's so many ways that you can have fun and you can relax and, and avoid some really, really, really crazy pitfalls during this time. If you, we take care of our mental health, take care of our physical health, and eat well, still eat well, um, and just try and do number one, relax. Okay, I hope this helps you out. I'd love to hear your comments below. Please make sure you subscribe and click on the bell so that you can get notifications of new videos. But I'd love to hear your comments, even um, some of your experiences that you're experiencing right now during this, um, this quarantine and maybe some tips that you have uh, of things that you're navigating that I didn't even mention, that I, I didn't even think of. I would love to hear those. And so I'll see you next time on Worship Life Moment.